What's up guys, it's Phil, and today I'm going to show you how to make a miniature barn door doggy door. Now this project is pretty cool and I've been doing a lot of these lately. Um, once the word got out I had a lot of customers and a lot of clients who were looking for these. They're a little bit more expensive so I haven't been doing as many <clears throat> but mine are done very well compared to some of the other stuff available on like Facebook Marketplace and all that. Um, it's not a big money maker for me so I figured I'd share it online and show you guys one of the ways that I do these doors and you can kind of adapt it to your own style if you want to make some of these for yourself or even start making them to sell. So let's talk materials. Um, for starters, I need some one by material in whatever species you choose. So for this particular project, <clears throat> I'm using a couple of one by sixes and a couple of one by fives as well. And I've got some one by fours for the trim pieces uh, that I'll be using a little bit later when we finish out the piece. I'm gonna be using pine, just common boards. Um, this is supposed to be lightweight. It is gonna be painted, um, and I'm pretty confident that I can get these nice and flat. I wouldn't recommend common lumber for this kind of stuff all that much, but if you're going for a farmhouse look, uh, and you want knots and you want to beat it up and all that kind of stuff, just get the straightest, driest pieces that you can. Try not to get them from a large, um, big box store because they're always garbage, uh, but <clears throat> if you can't help that, go ahead and get them there. Just spend some time, find some good ones, and use those. So for this project, I'm using two six-foot one-by-sixes and two eight-foot one-by-fives. I also picked up, I think, four uh, eight-foot one-by-fours, and that's what we're going to use to trim everything else out, uh, as well as to hang these with on the wall. That's pretty much it for lumber. Um, I did want to go ahead and get some one inch screws because there might be a couple of places that things need to be screwed together, but for the most part, I don't want this thing being held together so much with screws. I want it to be properly joined uh, so that everything is holding itself together and I don't have risk it popping apart later when the wood moves. Obviously, we're gonna need some wood glue and a paint or finish of your choice. For this particular one, I'm going to be using some uh, Alkid paint and just painting it up real nice, but you know, you guys can use a stain and a finish or however you want to do yours at home. Now let's talk tools. So these are going to be pretty simple. Uh, so really all you're going to need is a table saw and either a table saw sled, like a cross cut sled and a 45 degree sled, miter sled, or a chop saw, uh, which I also have as well. So I'm going to be using a table saw as well as the chop saw. Now the table saw, really, if you can get some perfectly straight boards, you actually may not need it. Um, I'm only going to be using it to help straighten out some pieces just to make sure I have a perfect stress-free fit. Um, <clears throat> but again, you don't necessarily have to do that. Optionally, you can also use a domino or a biscuit joiner or some dowels to help when putting all these things together. Um, mine are going to be small enough that I'm just going to be clamping them up, so you don't necessarily have to do that, but if you really do want to do something as far as alignment goes, for this project I'd recommend a biscuit joiner. Last but not least, we're going to want a hand plane to kind of clean some stuff up, a sander because you always want to smooth everything out when it's done, um, and then finally, some clamps. I've got bar clamps uh, that I'm going to be using for this particular project. You can use like flat bar clamps or whatever you want. We're not going to be applying too much pressure because we're not trying to straighten out bent boards because that's always going to pop apart later. But once you get a nice stress-free joint, we just need to lightly clamp them up and set them aside while they dry. And that should be it for your tools. All right, now let's talk about the cuts we're going to make. So for starters, we need four pieces of one by six at 28 and a half inches. We also need four pieces of one by five at 28 and a half inches. We also need four pieces of one by four at 28 and a half inches. Then we need three pieces of one by four at 19 and a half inches and four pieces of one by four at 12 and a half inches. And that's it for our cuts. Now later on, we're gonna go back and add our cross bracing, but I don't know exactly what the length is for that yet. And to be honest, this is such a quick project that I don't feel like worrying about that right now. So we'll talk about that later.
Now I didn't show it in the video, but I did actually use a straightening sled to get a nice straight edge on these boards. It makes it super quick and easy, and they're super easy to make yourself. You can also use a jointer for this process, but you have to be careful because once you use the jointer, you have to make sure that that is perfectly straight and square with your end that you just cut to length. So if you're gonna use a jointer, maybe cut them a little bit longer than 28 and a half to start, straighten your boards out, then cut them to their final length, and also after you use the jointer, flip it over and take it to your table saw to cut the other side perfectly straight and parallel. Now that these are cut and ready, it's time to start gluing them up. So we're very simply going to turn them all up on edge, apply a little bit of glue, smoosh it down with like your finger or something. Uh, I think I've got a silicone brush around here, but get all that glue spread out, slap them back together in the exact same order they were just in. Then we're gonna clamp them up, set them off to the side. So the next step is going to be taking one of your 19 and a half inch one by fours. We're gonna take this over to the table saw and rip it in half. Now, we're not technically gonna rip it in half because that doesn't work out with the math. What we are gonna do is go ahead and cut it down to one and one half inches. And you wanna rip the board once, set that first piece aside and then take the wider piece and rip it again. And that will give you two pieces that are the exact same width. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take those panels and go ahead and unclamp them. And as long as they've had enough time to dry, they should hang together pretty well. Uh, and you want to take either a hand plane or a card scraper or whatever you've got to kind of remove that excess glue. Once all that stuff is off, you can grab an orbital sander or run the pieces through a drum sander and go ahead and get everything as flat as you possibly can, clean it up nice and smooth, and we're gonna move on to the next step. So now that these panels are done and flat, um, they're nice and smooth, they've been sanded really good, I'm going to double check my distance here. Now, I did end up making a little bit of a faux pas, and both of these, this top panel is just shy of 19 inches, this bottom panel is exactly 19 inches. Um, and I don't wanna go through the whole process I just did because they're already really thin for this project, I don't wanna go through all that to add an extra inch or half inch to each. So what I'm going to do is when I put my face boards on, uh, I'm going to put them on, one directly up against that edge, and the other, I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap on the side, and I'm gonna make sure that these match up to exactly 19 and a half inches, like that. And now this little kind of air gap in here is fine, this is going to go on the outsides of the door. So you'll never see it, um, it's not really a big deal for me. If you really, really want to, you can go ahead and do all of this and then fill that in with a little strip of wood later. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I don't feel like taking the time to do that, so I'm just not going to. Um, but, so now it's time to start applying the face boards. Uh, so everything that's gonna go on the face here we're going to have our two boards going across the sides. We're going to have our two 12 and a halfs going across the top and bottom. And those are going to match up with our 19 and a halfs, the small one and a big one for each. The small one is going to go right across the bottom and the big one is going to go right across the top. And that's your door. Once that's done, our final step is going to be attaching the uh, cross braces, and I'll show you how to cut those once I get all this stuff on.
So at this point, I've attached the bottoms of the doors. Now, I've not attached the tops yet, and here's why. Um, there is a little bit of difference. It's not perfectly flat here. But it was pretty flat on the bottom, so I don't have any gaps or anything there. So to prevent having any gaps on the top, I'm going to use my table saw and set my fence so that I can run the bottom of the door against the fence and just barely nip off anything that's not evenly flat here. Uh, and then I can go ahead and attach the tops uh, to these two pieces and then I can start working on the crossbars. Now to add the cross beams on these, we're going to take the rest of our 1x3s and mark the center point on the door and you want to run your piece up and down from that center point and just freehand mark it. Uh, and then from there, you can go over to your miter saw and keep adjusting your angle until you get it just right. For this, you can also use a protractor, uh, which I'm gonna do a little bit of both to try and get it right, but on a door this small and on a one-off, if you're doing it yourself for your house, there's really not an easy way to necessarily just do this other than just eyeball it and do it by hand. So let's give that a shot. have been glued and nailed in place I'm gonna go ahead and give everything one more sanding before I attach the tops because it's just gonna be easier without the tops on and then I'll sand those and have everything prepped and ready for paint And finally, now that these bad boys are sanded, I'm going to take my last uh, 19 and a half inch pieces, the one by fours, and you have a couple of options here. Um, you can simply find the center of them and attach them onto the top of the door, like that. Uh, or, because I've done so much sanding on this piece, uh, it's a little thinner than I normally start with. So, I'm going to line this up so that I have about a quarter of an inch gap on that side. I'm gonna mark it here at about a quarter of an inch gap. Let's we'll see where I'm at. So I'm just shy of two inches. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and rip both of these down to two inches and then attach those to the top. Uh, and go ahead and sand everything, round it off, get it nice and smooth, and then get these guys outside and get it painted. So that's the last step, ripping these down to two inches and then attaching them, and then we're good to go.
watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know that little puppy enjoyed having her doors installed so that she can no longer get to the human spaces and get herself into trouble. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, make sure to subscribe. I'm constantly doing DIYs like this and I've got a couple more projects uh, coming up. So hopefully those videos will be posted soon. Make sure to like the video if you really liked it and comment below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Actually, just questions or comments because you're concerned I don't care about. Find me on Instagram and Facebook at PMK Woodworking. And make sure to share any of these videos you like on social media. Help me grow this channel a little bit and get the word out. So thanks for watching guys. Enjoy doing this project and we'll see you next time.